Are you suffering with shoulder pain? You think it's your rotator cuff. You don't know exactly what to do. Maybe you've looked on YouTube to try to find some videos for some pain relief exercises, but you tried those and those are actually increasing your pain. Well, today we're gonna to talk about exercises that you can do safely, how to make sure that you're doing them safely and that you can progress to work on your rotator cuff. We're gonna discuss exactly what the rotator cuff is and exactly what it does, as well as why it's so important in the shoulder. Ready? Let's go. So first, let's discuss what the rotator cuff muscles are because it's actually four different muscles that are involved in the rotator cuff and they're all really, really important. Captain Jack is gonna help us demonstrate here today. So there's four muscles in the rotator cuff, the first one being the supraspinatus, it's super creatively named because it's above the spine of the scapula. There you go. And then there's the infraspinatus below. And then there's teres minor. And then there's a muscle that's up in here that's called the subscapularis. These four muscles attach to the humerus, the arm bone, and help to create that stability in the shoulder so the shoulder has that full range of motion. Now, it's really important that they all work correctly because they all do something a little bit different. And that's where you get that stability. So if you have a small tear in the muscle or if there's just a tension or something going on, it can be really difficult to move your shoulder pain-free because all of the muscles are not balanced. Okay. The first exercise we're gonna do is called internal rotation. This is particularly to work on the subscapularis, which is the muscle that's underneath that scapula there. Now, it's a little difficult to do internal rotation against gravity because it would require you to lay on that shoulder. And for a lot of people, that is really painful. So I don't recommend doing those exercises, although you might have seen them on YouTube, and they're fine to do if it doesn't cause you pain to lay on that shoulder. What I recommend for my patients when they're starting to do exercise with a painful shoulder is that they do internal rotation isometrically. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit up nice and tall in that really good posture, head over shoulders, shoulders over hips, and then you're going to bring that elbow to your side with the hand straight out. It's important that you keep that elbow tucked to the side during the entire exercise. Then you're gonna use the other hand. So we're gonna say my right shoulder is the painful shoulder. We're gonna use the left hand to provide some resistance. So now I'm gonna push against that. I'm gonna hold for five seconds and then I'm going to release. And you can even do a little bit of a stretch at the end as long as it doesn't cause pain. So you're gonna hold five seconds, four, three, two, one, and then do a little bit of a stretch at the end. You may actually feel that muscle contracting and you may feel a little bit of a stretch when you bring it out to the side. As long as it's pain-free, that's okay. If these exercises are painful, I definitely recommend that you check with a shoulder specialist to make sure that you're doing exercises that are safe and effective for you. For the next exercise, we're gonna do external rotation. So that's exactly the opposite motion. What I'm gonna have you do for this one is lay on the non-painful shoulder. So again, my right side is my painful shoulder. I'm gonna have you roll up a towel roll and put it underneath the elbow. Again, that's gonna help keep everything in place where we want it to be. And then you're gonna start with your hands straight out again. And this time you're gonna lift it up as high as you can pain-free. Now this motion right here is going to accentuate the infraspinatus and teres minor and get those muscles working correctly. But if you feel like it's not enough of a workout, you can put a small weight in your hand. I usually recommend people start with one to two pounds to make sure it's okay. And if you don't have any weights around, you can use something like a water bottle or a can of soup or something like that. With this one, I recommend two sets of 15 repetitions to make sure you get that muscle nice and strong. All right, so we've worked the subscapularis, which is the internal rotator. We've worked infraspinatus and teres minor, which is the external rotator. Now we wanna put those motions together to make sure that we're getting a really comprehensive motion through the shoulder. The thing is, it's good to work on the muscles individually if they have a specific problem. However, the truth of the matter is, is all the shoulder muscles work together. And so you really need to get that compound motion to make sure that you have pain-free motion. Now, we're gonna be very particular in how we start this exercise and in the plane of motion that we're doing. So the plane of motion we're gonna do is called scaption. So it's not straight forward, that's flexion. It's not straight to the side, that's abduction. 
it's right in the middle. We call that a 45 degree plane and it's called scaption because it's the plane that the scapula moves in. Now to start this, we're gonna have our palms facing forward. In that 45 degree of motion, you're gonna bring your hands up while keeping your shoulders resting down. It's really important to make sure that as your arms come up, your shoulders don't come up by your ears. We don't want that. We wanna make sure that those shoulders blades come down as those hands come up. Now, if this motion is pain-free, you can go ahead and progress it, and you can start to bring those hands up above horizontal and reaching up to the ceiling. As you're doing this full range of motion, again, it should be completely pain-free through the range of motion. If you have any pain, stop below that point and only go up that high. Staying in the plane of scaption can keep you in a more pain-free motion than doing pure flexion or pure abduction. It also teaches those muscles how to work correctly together. Now, you will notice that as I go above horizontal, my shoulders are gonna start coming up a little bit. And that's normal when you're above horizontal. So below horizontal, it's important to keep those shoulder blades down, but as you come above, they're gonna have to glide up a little bit. And that's totally normal motion. You just wanna make sure that you're not hunching them here because then that causes compression of the rotator cuff muscles as you come above overhead. So make sure the shoulder blades are staying nice and down and relaxed when you're below horizontal. Now with this exercise, I usually have people do two sets of 15 reps and make sure that they feel that those shoulder blades are moving on their spine correctly. So you wanna make sure that you feel those shoulder blades gliding around. And I know it's a little weird because they're on your back, but it is important to feel, is that shoulder blade actually gliding as I move my arm? If it's not, the next exercise is gonna be really helpful for you because it's gonna to help to work on the rhomboids. The rhomboids are really important in keeping that shoulder blade moving correctly. All right, now to work those rhomboids, which will help to make sure that the shoulder blades are moving correctly, I like to have people do what we call I's, Y's, and T's. And you've probably heard of these exercises before, but it's really important to make sure that you're getting the right activation while you're doing them. Now you can do it on the floor, but it makes it a little bit harder because you're gonna have less motion if you're stopped by the floor. I like to do it personally on a therapy ball. You can also do it sometimes on a living room table or an ottoman or something like that where you're a little bit elevated. If you wanna do one side at a time, you can also do it off of your bed. Now for today, we're gonna use the ball. So I's, Y's, and T's are the position that your arms are gonna be in. We're gonna start with T's, move to Y's, and move to I's. Now, the T's are the easiest one, and it's the easiest to feel the shoulder blades moving. As you go to Y's, and especially I's, that can be really difficult. Especially the I's are pretty difficult because it's important to get that lat activation to pull that shoulder blade down, and that's something that we tend to be missing in our day-to-day -day life. And I am no exception to that, so you'll see that as we go through it. It's important to find the motion that is pain-free for you, that you feel like you're actually getting strengthening. And then we wanna do two sets of 15. All right, so we'll start with the T's. So to do the T's, you're gonna be resting on the ball. Knees are nice and far apart, so you've got good balance. You're gonna bring your arms out to the side, slightly below your shoulders. And then you're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together, which lifts your arms up. Now, it's important that the shoulder blades are moving along with this. You're not trying to move the hands without moving the shoulder blades. You can see how that causes a lot of compression through my shoulders. So we wanna make sure we're lifting up with the shoulder blades. If that feels too easy and you're ready for a progression, we're gonna to go to Y's. This one, the thumb is gonna be pointing up. And again, you're trying to squeeze those shoulder blades down and together as you come up. Now the eyes are definitely the most challenging. That's with your arms together. Again, thumbs are pointed up. And this one involves getting the lat activated. And so that makes it more challenging. And again, we wanna make sure that those shoulder blades are not squeezing up by the ears. So find the one that works best for you, the T's, the Y's, or the I's, and that's how you can progress through that exercise. When you can do two sets of 15 reps and it doesn't hurt, you can progress onto the next one. All right, now it's time for a compound and more functional movement. So what we're gonna do now is do wall push-ups. Many people question why I start on the wall 
as opposed to doing it on the floor or on your knees or something like that. Again, motion is lotion and movement is life. Regular normal motion is required for these tissues to be able to heal. Doing it on the wall decreases the stress to the muscles and allows them to contract and relax. If we start on the floor, even if you're on your knees, the muscles have to work harder. And what we actually wanna do is make sure that we're getting that full motion so the muscles can heal. That's why I like to start on the wall. Now, you may be super strong and you may be like, I can do it with good motion on the floor at this point because I've done the other exercises. That's absolutely fine. But I recommend starting on the wall to make sure that you have that full motion while you're doing it. And it's gonna be just your typical push-up. So you're gonna start with your feet about arm distance from the wall. You're gonna put your hands up on the wall and you're gonna make sure that when you're coming down, you're getting that good shoulder blade motion. So your shoulders are coming together, then you're pushing off and shoulder blades are coming apart. And as you're doing this, you really wanna feel the shoulder blades moving. You should feel all the muscles in your shoulders activating while you're doing that. And again, it should be pain-free. If you have any pain when you're on the wall, then you definitely don't wanna progress into the floor. Now, if you can do two sets of 20 push-ups on the wall and you don't feel like there's any muscle fatigue and you don't have any pain, that would be a good time to progress to push-ups on the floor. All right, there it is. The exercises that I recommend you do to eliminate your rotator cuff pain instantly. Which exercise was your favorite? Drop a comment below and let us know. Now, if you feel like, I'm not sure my shoulder pain is actually coming from my rotator cuff, I think there might be something else going on, I'm gonna recommend you check out this video over here where we discuss the different pain generators that are found within the shoulder and give you some simple tests that you can do at home to test for yourself.